You're listening to a podcast from digitaloilgas.com. This podcast is entitled Digital Strategy for Upstream Oil and Gas. Digital technologies are overturning one industry after another. So what should be the digital strategy for a typical upstream oil and gas company? Well, first question is, will digital even impact the upstream? Well, in a word, yes. Digital technologies are here to stay. They're evolving much faster than anyone can easily predict, and they will have unforeseen impacts. They're already making an appearance in the upstream, and their business applications are instructive for how progressive companies view the role of digital in their business models. And the key word here is progressive. The more progressive companies no longer just deploy point solutions to cut their costs and gain uh, incremental improvements. They embrace more systems thinking, target sustainable cost reduction, and embed an innovative mindset. These companies have realized it's not just about doing things better, but doing things differently. Exploring digital technologies is one such way of doing this. Now, I include a pretty broad range of resources in the definition of upstream, including the unconventional as well as conventional resources, bitumen mining, gas and liquids, onshore and offshore. Upstream to me means exploration and production. I think there's a different strategy for midstream companies, those that are focused on processing and transportation of hydrocarbons. Well, first, how might digital impact the upstream? Well, the value of an upstream company is strongly correlated, some 70%, to just two variables. How much of the commodity the company has in reserves multiplied by today's price of the commodity? 30% is for everything else. How efficiently resources are produced and how effective is the company at replacing and growing its reserves? A digital strategy in the upstream, therefore, should be one that makes a material difference on these key variables, reserves, efficient production, and growth, in which case it will be strongly aligned with and supporting the business strategy. Of course, the business strategy will also be flavored by the nature of the resource, the reserve's location, extraction methods, capital availability, venture structures, supply chain capabilities, and so forth, and the digital strategy needs to take this into account. The strategy should also create short-term value, such as reducing fuel consumption through sensors on vehicles, as well as longer-term value, such as improving reserves understanding through better analytics. Here's some of how the broad categories of digital technologies might feature in a digital strategy for the upstream. Let's begin with data integration. This category includes external collaboration, as in the supply chain, software-to-software collaboration via application programming interfaces, and cloud orchestration. The first key use of digital data integration in the upstream is during capital execution and handover. Much upstream data related to man-made assets originates with suppliers, and improved data management about assets is probably the single most impactful investment in digital that a typical upstream company can make. The benefits last a lifetime over the whole life of asset and enable many other innovations in digital. The second key use case is in software-to-software integration. Upstream companies usually have dozens of critical software applications that are deeply embedded in their business operations, and these applications transition very slowly over time. Building integrations between them, using the kinds of new capabilities found in the digital economy, is the second most important investment opportunity for the upstream, and helps preserve the value of data captured during handover, as well as changes to data during ongoing operations. A third use case is in the area of cognitive computing, a technology that works on new classes of problems by approaching them like a human does, adaptively, interactively, iteratively, and contextually. The next key category for my digital strategy for Upstream includes analytics. This category includes visualization tools, predictive analytics, machine learning, deep learning, and artificial intelligence. After data, analytics is the next most important digital investment for oil and gas. The sector is already analysis intense, there's ample data to work with, and the users are pretty sophisticated. Better visualization, self-service analytics, cloud analytics, forecasting, and modeling will all impact these key measures of reserves, production efficiency, and effectiveness. One application of analytics that helps accelerate capital execution is using gaming software tools. One project fed its Primavera P6 project plan into a game engine to visualize how the project plan would work. The game revealed a variety of planning goofs, such as cranes arriving to install structures that hadn't been delivered, for example. This field is called forensic animation. Predictive maintenance is another great use of analytics. One of the problems in many oil and gas fields is downhole pump failure. Pumps have a warranty period, but frequently pumps fail well before that time, 
and retrieving a bad pump is costly, both because of the call-out costs and the lost production, not to mention potential for damaging the reservoir. Analytics can help direct downhole maintenance to those pumps most at risk. Another key area that would be in my digital strategy would be around mobility. This category includes wearable devices like watches, bands, and sensors that people might wear, in-vehicle monitoring systems, or IVMS, for lighting up forklifts, cranes, trucks, and rigs, and the two-way communications that such devices enable from a central control facility or from peers. The geofencing, or the ability to put business rules in effect relative to GPS coordinates. The best value mobility use cases are going to be related to vehicle and equipment to help with optimization and efficient allocation to boost the capacity utilization of those assets. Transport companies are well advanced in applying IVMS for road operations and safety, but much of the other kit has yet to be lit up. Wearables improve safety for employees, providing alarms, no-go zone alerts, rescues and evacuations, and contractor billing. Mining companies are already exper experimenting here, but the change issues are immense. Once critical data sources become accurate and reliable, a mobile use case to deliver operating and maintenance information directly to employees via mobile devices will emerge. Next is the Industrial Internet of Things. This category includes surveillance and monitoring systems such as cameras, motion detectors, accelerometers, measurement devices, and sensors, and systems that automatically adjust and correct for changing circumstances, like ventilation systems that ramp up and down depending on air quality. Progressive companies invest in integrated operation centers or control rooms that pull the data together to enable analytics, reporting, and improved monitoring. This use case is well established. In fact, most oil and gas companies are drowning in data from industrial sensors. Lately, gas companies have added cameras and sensors on gates, gauges, and passages, but could go much further to integrate these technologies into dashboards with other industrial kit. For example, mining companies integrate air quality sensor data within vehicle systems to amp up ventilation when subsurface mining vehicles are idling. The key use case for the industrial internet of things is likely in an area like fuel consumption. Fuel represents a large outgoing for most upstream companies and their suppliers, and anything that can help reduce fuel would be welcome. That might include measuring fuel usage by vehicle, by driver, by route, to find out where fuel usage is the highest, under what conditions, and how it might be improved by changing operator behavior, routes, or route conditions. Another key area for the upstream oil and gas concern is social collaboration. This category includes interpersonal collaboration solutions like Slack and Yammer, but as well social activation and crowdsourcing, asking a crowd of experts for ideas and solutions. Crowdsourcing has already proven its value in areas like reserves analysis, where seismic data and other subsurface information is handed to crowds in the cloud for help in improving analytic techniques. One upstream player uses crowdsourcing to improve its ability to identify sweet spots in unconventional basins. My personal favorite is Uber for field services, an aspect of the industry that is crying out for improvement. Next is workflow. This category includes workflow automation, a mature solution already found in shared service centers and now getting a renewal, and the automated execution of work. This technology is best applied to the routine work, such as the, that found in things like uh, field development design. Next are the key industrial breakthroughs. This includes additive manufacturing like 3D printing, robotics, and autonomous devices or drones. Additive manufacturing could make a big difference to heavy oil and gas assets that contain lots of critical equipment and therefore need critical spares and are some distance remote from replacement parts. Printing spare parts makes the supply chain more responsive, which boosts equipment availability, speed, and quality, and that drives the efficiency of production. The U.S. Navy, for instance, deploys 3D printers on its aircraft carriers for the same reasons. Drones are already a feature of gas projects in Australia, where they're used to monitor and inspect production facilities from the air. The impact here is in cost reduction for well inspections and the improvement in productivity of field workers. Well, let's pull all this together and uh, build our digital strategy. A good digital strategy for an upstream company would start with the business strategy and then consider the digital goals and objectives, which investments will make the biggest impact, how those investments will differentiate the business, what new capabilities need to be put into place, and what new mechanisms are needed to keep up progress. If you think about it, the key elements would probably include at least some of the following. 
a focus on data. Without very strong underlying data and foundational competence in managing data assets, the potential benefits to digital are lost. New investments will not be able to rely on historic data and will add fresh, high-quality data to what's already a bad pile. Job one must be to create that strong underlying culture of data integrity and a cleanup of historic data to make it more reliable. Next would be integration. Unless highly reliable data becomes commonplace across systems and databases, users will not trust it. Therefore, deploying high-quality integrations between critical engineering systems is a second key thrust. Third is analytics. The benefits of high-quality and reliable data that is consistent across different systems and boundaries show up in decisions based on better analytics. Therefore, the third focus area should be on improving analytic capability and capacity. And finally, high-value point solutions. There are a few high-impact value-releasing solutions that digital can impact immediately. Fuel consumption, particularly in bitumen mining, sweet spot detection, and social collaboration in the supply chain. Well, there you have it. If you're interested to hear more, look me up on LinkedIn. You have been listening to a podcast from digitaloilgas.com. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe to future installments and visit us at digitaloilgas.com.